Thank you all for being here tonight. Tonight we are excited to present some more recipes using Mediterranean heart healthy inspired meals, but more of a vegetarian approach and also using the ancient grains and the vegetable proteins in our dishes. Joining, I'm joining Julie this evening, and we have um, the recipes that were, were, are in your packets, the peppers stuffed with roasted Mediterranean vegetables. That one is using kamut, which is an ancient grain, and also the uh, protein in that would be your chickpeas or garbanzo beans. You may be familiar with that. Tabbouleh is another salad we'll be using or preparing, and that would have the ancient grain quinoa. Then pronounced M. Mm, jadra. Jadra is a lentil and bulgur. Bulgur is also an ancient grain. And then for dessert, we're having grilled peaches with Greek yogurt, and honey, flaxseed, and almonds. So a lot of tasty recipes may be new to you, and we'll just begin. All right. Thank you, Tamara. And um, as Tamara said, you know, these are the recipes that we have. We, we will be going back and forth. Our goal is to try to plate the main course for you, and then we'll do the dessert separate. We'll finish that up while you're eating the main course, but we will jump back and forth, so hopefully we can time things to finish all together. So I'll tell you a little bit about the recipes and then we'll, and kind of the things that we've started so far and then jump into the prep. So the pepper stuffed with um, roasted Mediterranean vegetables. Um, we have some onions chopped, some zucchini, but you can really use any kind of summer squash. You want something that's gonna be quick cooking. So it could be the yellow squash, the crook neck. It could also be patty pan, whatever summer squash you have and then some cherry tomatoes, but you could also use grape tomatoes. Um, you could use plum tomatoes too. And um, if they're big, you wanna cut them in half or quarter them just so that they're easy to eat. So those are the ones that we'll be um, roasting. And then we have um, some spices to go with those. We have cumin, which helps to give it kind of a smoky taste, a real typical um, Middle Eastern um, spice. Then we also have some garlic, again, something very common and popular in the Middle East. And then we have some um, fresh oregano as well. Um, then we have our peppers. Um, so these are organic red peppers that have been cut in half and seeded and then just placed into pans. Um, and so we'll be stuffing that. Um, the kamut, because it takes a little while to cook, this has been um, cooking in stock for about 40 minutes or so. So we'll drain this. Um, when it's ready and add it to the, the rest of the um, vegetables. Oh, we also have garbanzo beans that will go in here as well. These are also organic, and they're just from a can, and then they've been rinsed and drained. You can also get the dried garbanzo beans, which are super economical, but you just want to make sure then that you're soaking those overnight or, or cooking them until they're um, partially tender. Um, and then for our tabbouleh, um, we have um, local, um, organically grown um, parsley, and then we have some organic um, quinoa, um, some olive oil, and so on. So I think to start with, what we'll do is get our vegetables ready that we're gonna roast, get those in the oven um, so we can get them going, and then we'll um, jump into finishing our other items um, while those are roasting. Um, and then um, we're also gonna be adding some olive oil. Um, and so we'll just drizzle some on here. And then also um, some salt and pepper. And I think if you can add salt and pepper early in the cooking process for most things, you're gonna get the most flavor out of it with the least amount of sodium. And so if while you're grilling onions or sauteing onions or whatever other vegetables, um, your, your salt's gonna go much further um, with, with the least amount of sodium. So we'll sprinkle the salt and pepper on, and then we'll just combine those and put those in our pan. Grab a spoon quick. And I really recommend using, uh, let me grab the salt here. Um, recommend using a sea or a kosher salt. 
um, those, those salts are going to have more mineral flavor and other flavors and less sodium. So they're going to be a little healthier for you. They're also not as dense in the salt flavor, so it's also more difficult to oversalt. So if you're trying to avoid sodium and you want more flavor, um, that sea or kosher salt is really, really a good option. So we'll let those roast. And then um, for our um, kamut, we'll go ahead and drain that. And what we're looking for is to still have a little bit of chew and texture. So we don't want it cooked so long that it becomes mushy, but we want it to cook long enough to be tender. But again, this is an ancient grain. It's a strain of wheat. And it's just a lot larger kernel, as you'll notice. Mm -hmm. um, so then um, the other things that are going to, uh, or just a couple other things, too, I would mention. This I cooked in um, a mixture of stock and water. So I wanted some of the stock for some flavor, but not necessarily to overflavor it and not to create too much um, sodium either. Then um, we also have some um, additional um, chopped parsley that we're going to use. Um, again, we have the oregano too, um, and we use the salt and pepper. And then um, the other thing that we're going to add to this um, is some basil. And again, this is also um, fresh from um, Gregson Gardens. I'm just going to move my um, mint out of the way here. And the, um, a couple things, I don't know if you've done much in terms of chopping parsley or chopping herbs, but one of the things that I found that helps to sometimes make it a little bit easier is if you just take, especially if you're trying to do a fine chop, just take all of your parsley or your herb and really just kind of try to wrap them up um, so that you have kind of a tight bundle. And then make sure you have a nice um, sharp knife that you're comfortable with and then just go across it just about as close as you can, just tiny itty-bitty itty um, steps along the way, and then continue to pull the herbs together if the little bundle starts to come apart. And then once it gets too close to your fingers, then just put it together and kind of go in a quarter circle, put it together, and then go around again. And your hand is on top of the knife, um, keep your fingers up, and then you don't have to worry about um, losing any digits in the process of cooking. For the basil, um, it is an herb that bruises um, easier than some, and so it's good to um, do the chopping and cutting on that just before you're ready to use it. A lot of um, Mediterranean recipes called for um, basil that's a chiffonade, which means torn rags. Um, and so you just roll them up and chop them so you have some long, thin strips. So if you ever see that, that's, that's what it refers to. And I'm going to put these aside because we'll add those um, to, the, um, to the roasted vegetables once they've cooked just a little bit. So tabbouleh has quinoa as the grain, the ancient grain, and we can pass this around. One unique aspect of quinoa is that it has all nine essential amino acids in it. And what does that mean? Well, when you look at animal proteins, they have all nine essential amino acids which maintain muscle mass. And this is the only ancient grain that has all nine. So you do want to rinse it. Uh, you'll get it in a bag and like it is right now, we would put it in a strainer and rinse it mm -hmm. so that you're getting rid of that coating on the outside of that grain. So we'll get the water heating. It takes like 10 or 15 minutes, and then just a little bit of time to cool. So it's really a pretty fast um, item to cook, too. So then um, in the tabbouleh then, which is, um, again, kind of an herb salad, we have our parsley. So I, I went ahead and um, got quite a bit of that already chopped up for us. And it's really um, a pretty simple salad to do. And then um, mint is a really popular herb to use in the Middle East as well. It's another one of those things that adds great color, great flavor. Then um, the other thing that's a standard in tabbouleh is chopped tomatoes. And so for these, good catch. Um, so for these, um, what Jan did was essentially take a scoop to take out the seeds and the extra juice. So that way your salad 
doesn't get so watery. Um, and then you can chop these you know, as fine or as coarse as you'd like, um, but you want them to be fairly small. And I think one of the things, um, sort of one of my philosophies when you're eating is that it's nice that you have a mix of everything that will still all fit on one fork or one spoon when you eat it. So that you got kind of a mix of everything that's part of that dish. So if you make sure that things are small enough to do that, I think that's, that's nice. And then um, we've just let these drain um, so we can get out a little bit of the additional juice. And once the salt um, gets added to this in the dressing, it will continue to seep water out. So the more water you can get out front, um, the less watery your salad's going to be. And, and really pretty, too. So our um, quinoa is going here. And we want to just put that down to about a simmer. And again, only 10 or 15 minutes, and that'll be, be ready to go. And then um, also in our tabbouleh, um, we have our, let's see if I can find it here, our um, vinaigrette ingredients. So we have um, olive oil, and then we have some salt, and then I'll grab some pepper too. And um, again, kind of like with the salt and everything else, I think if you can use freshly ground pepper, it's going to have more flavor too. And again, I think one of the keys to, to feeling satisfied and full, which sometimes helps us to eat less um, or, or eat healthier, is to have things with lots of flavor. So the fresh herbs, freshly ground pepper, all of that um, can help add, add to that. Um, and then um, we'll just take our salt um, and our pepper and our olive oil, and then um, we have um, some lemon juice. Lemon is a, also a big item in the Mediterranean, and um, this is something, too, that's going to add a lot of nice flavor, but um, not much of anything as far as calories are concerned. And then um, we'll just whisk it up, and that's all there is to it. And if you do like salads, and that's part of your regular diet, making dressing at home is really a simple thing to do. And again, something that's going to be a lot healthier and a lot fresher. And it's really just as simple as some sort of a fat, some sort of a vinegar, and then some other flavors. And so um, for this, we have just some olive oil. And I know this looks like a lot of oil for the amount of onions that we're going to use. But the olive oil is part of what, what's going to add some richness to the meal. And part of um, you know, being satisfied when you eat is eating fat. That's one of the things that sticks with us the longest, makes us stay full. Um, it's pretty hard, I think, to be satisfied if you're not consuming some fat. Plus, your body does need some of it. And olive oil is a heart-healthy one. It also has good flavor. Um, and so even though it may seem like a lot, you know, it's going to go for a lot of food, and um, it is one of those things that is going to, again, add some richness and, and help make you feel full. And so we want the oil just to start to shimmer a little bit so that we know that it's warm. So this is just about ready. You can see how it start, it's a little bit thick and how it kind of sticks together. Um, and we do want this um, sort of like the Italian al dente. You want you don't want it to be completely mush. You want a little bit of texture to it. Um, and so we'll drain this. Um, we'll put it on the pan to cool. And then it'll be ready for our salad. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and um, take the kamut and put it in um, this bowl so we can combine it with our vegetables. And then we'll just use this um, to drain the, the quinoa. And I'm just going to continue to stir it a little bit, which will help some of the moisture go to the bottom. And it'll also help to release some of the steam, help that cooling process a little bit, too. That doesn't look like that little white grain that we just saw. Mm -mm. No, so not at all. So it really puffs up and now is going to be a soft, fluffy product. And then we'll just spread that out. If any of you have a solid surface countertop at home, you probably have already done this with some things, but you can, um, this is going to absorb some of your heat. And so you can put it down, and then in five minutes move it, and then it'll absorb heat in another spot and help it cool a little bit faster, too. Mm -hmm.
right? And then we have our um, roasted vegetables that Jan took out of the oven here. And so roasting them like this also adds some additional flavor to them as well. Um, but we still have some nice color. And then we have our garbanzo beans. So again, these are going to give us some additional protein as well, um, and another texture too. So our kamut and our chickpeas go together. Two incomplete proteins, you put them together, you have all, all nine amino acids. And also it gives good fiber. Fiber keeps cholesterol in balance. And then we have um, basil and the parsley that we're gonna add. And then the other thing, again, really typical in Mediterranean food is the lemon. This has both the zest and the juice in it um, from a lemon. So we'll add that, and that'll add, again, some tartness um, and some enhanced flavor to it. And then I like to just use um, a portion scoop because it's easy then, I think, for things to fit into um, your pepper cavities and easy to keep the amounts even. Aren't those bright and beautiful? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we'll put those in the oven then. We've got protein, grain, and vegetable all in a nice little packet. Mm -hmm. And all kinds of flavor. Mm -hmm. With the cumin and the um, garlic and the basil and the parsley. Oh, also on parsley, too, I mean, you can use either kind that you like, but I do think that the flat leaf Italian parsley has a bit more flavor than the curly parsley, too. And then um, our bulgur wheat and some salt and pepper. And again, I would rather get the salt and pepper in oh, thanks, kind of earlier in the process so it has a chance to cook and disseminate across all of your food. And this too lets you get some of the oil coating and flavoring everything. And then um, I'm gonna switch this over next to me so it's a little easier to watch. I really like these big enamel cast iron pans too. They hold the heat in really well. So even if you're adding cold ingredients, um, they're still um, gonna keep things reasonably warm. And then we're gonna cook this at a fairly high temperature. We'll keep an eye on it and it won't be long before it's ready. So then um, we'll just, um, you can either scrape it all in or you can also move things to the middle and then just pick up your silicone sheet and dump it all into the bowl, which is really handy too. Well, that's really handy, just the gravity effect there. Yep, and we'll just dump it all in. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, yep, and it slides off pretty well. <laughs> no, no. And then we'll stir this again. And this is one of those things, too, when you add the lemon, that acid will break down um, your tomatoes and other things that are in here. So it will make it, and plus it's liquid, it'll make things waterier. But again, if you want to do something in advance, you can go to this point, have this ready to go, and then a couple minutes before your guests arrive, just add the dressing to it, mm -hmm. and you're all set. And if you need to, if you want to take something like this to um, a party or a picnic or something, you can also just put all, do all the stirring, um, get your bowl all messy on the inside and the outside, find whatever bowl you want to take, put this in the bottom, put this on top, and then when you get there, stir it, and it'll be ready to go, too. Okay. 
without it um, breaking down anymore. You could um, grill these outside, but we're going to, just for convenience, grill them inside here. So I have just um, two grill pans. Um, and you could do it in a flat pan, but a grill pan is going to make it a little bit, bit easier. Um, and you could um, also do this in the oven on a broiler pan if you wanted to, in which case I would probably just put your peaches upright instead of upside down. Um, or if you have a propane um, or a charcoal grill, you could def definitely grill these outside as well, and then you'd get a slightly different flavor. And um, for this, we're using just the tiniest bit of olive oil. It's really just to um, um, put on the surface of the pan. Jane, I always forget where we have brushes. Oh, right here. Okay. And so I'm just going to, um, I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. We want it to simmer, but not go over the pan. And we'll just put the tiniest bit in each, and then just take the brush and go across just to help reduce any sticking that we might get. Jan was nice enough to go ahead and cut all the peaches and pit them for us earlier. We did put a little bit of lemon juice on them, but you don't necessarily need to do that. And because they're going to be grilled, the fact that they're going to brown a little bit isn't really a big mm -hmm. deal. Um, so but did you like brush the brush them with the lemon juice? Yeah, have... yep. Yeah, I think um, Jan, you just drizzled it, squeezed the lemon over the top. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so you can just do that, um, and then um, we'll grill these once it warms up just a little bit, and then um, we have um, the um, the yogurt. So the uh, Greek yogurt is a great way to add protein to your diet. Um, and then you can also add fat as well. I mean, it's going to be animal fat rather than the plant-based fat. Um, but again, it's one of those things that's going to make you feel full and satisfied. Um, and you could use a 2% or a 4% depending on how much fat you want to have in your, your particular meal. So this is the yogurt. And then um, this is um, uh, an orange that's been zested and then two tablespoons of the juice that's been added to it. So we're going to get some nice flavor there. And then also there's a tablespoon of honey in here. So we're going to get a little bit of sweetness, but with um, a, a, a sweetener that isn't overly processed and a little parsley too. Um, and then we have some herbs in here or some spices. Not a whole lot, but we have really just a little bit more than a pinch of cardamom, nutmeg, um, and then also cinnamon. And then the other thing that we're going to add is some... Um, Vanilla bean paste. I like the Nielsen Massey. They come in jars or whatever. But also, you can cover your ears, Tamara, because uh, sometimes lattes aren't the healthiest thing for people. But um, this, to make a vanilla latte, is really good. And it reduces the amount of sugar. Okay. That you put, but you sure. still have a lot of good flavor. So mm -hmm. um, it can still be reasonably healthy. Um, our pans are pretty warm now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn these down just a little bit and then um, put our peaches on here. And we left the skin on. You know, they provide flavor and some flavor. They've been washed, so they're not too terribly fuzzy. Um, but if you have people who really object to the skin, you could peel them if you want to, but you really um, don't need to do that. And then um, these are relatively small peaches. Um, which I think is still enough for a good dessert portion. Um, but if you can only find larger ones, then you might just use um, a quarter of the peach okay. instead of a, a full half. And then I'm just going to do the almonds and the honey. In here. And this is really kind of a double batch, so we might have some extras. And again, I like to try to, if um, you can avoid using processed sugars, so honey or the other one that I really like that um, they have here is Lyle's Golden Syrup. So instead of um, putting processed sugar, even just the little bit that we're going to do with this, you could sprinkle it with the coconut sugar. And then um, we will just take a little bit of sugar. I'm just going to stir this again. 
That's the other thing with this too, is that for the most part, once it's absorbed the water, it's going to be at the tenderness that you need. So another way to, to tell it too. And then we just want to spread these so they're really just kind of a single layer. Um, and then we'll put a little bit of salt. I'm going to use, um, this does a really fine grind on it. So again, we're going to get our salt without um, too much on there. Um, and then we'll put these in the oven um, for just a few minutes and they'll be ready to go. Thank you, Jan. And this, you can hear the sort of cauldron going, so it's getting really close. And about at this point, um, I would do that test, make sure it's the tenderness that I want. And then if um, not, add a little bit more water. And if it is, so pretty much most of the water's evaporated. All we see are little bubbles. And then this is a good time to add um, the onions to it, too. We are there. And although, you know, the sugars or the onions have a fair amount of sugar to them, if you want to add some additional flavor, you could increase um, the amount of onion. Um, just, you know, count those calories and carbohydrates into it. Um, and again, if you're a garlic fan, you could add garlic to this as well. Um, and again, just kind of try to make it make it your own. Um, because we're just about ready there, just about ready with our stuffed peppers, I'm going to go ahead and um, put the um, dressing on our tabbouleh and start to plate some things up. This is our M. hardara, that is lentils and what was with that M. hardara? Bulgur and lentils. Complete protein, two incomplete yep, proteins for complete protein. Thank you. We could just use that as our meat or our chicken and be good. Then we have our Mediterranean stuffed vegetable or stuffed peppers. And we're using kamut and garbanzo beans or chickpeas. Yeah. And then our tabbouleh, and we can just which is quinoa. Quinoa is a grain or an ancient grain that has all the amino acids for a complete protein. And we'll just cut like 85% of the way through so we can get a little fan. Oh. And that's why if you have a big peach, even a quarter will work just fine. Um, and we'll just wow. put that on our Bowl. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. And then just take huh. our sauce here. And we'll take a nice pretty mint sprig. And I would recommend eating the mint too. It'll add some nice flavor to it as well. Um, and then we have some other flowers here too. So things in the pansy line are also edible. OK, so then here's our almonds. And again, these are going to give us um, some more fat. They're going to give us um, some crunch. And you can also then just take your um, silicone and then just break them all up. 